Thanks for staying with us. CBN raises interest rate to 27.25%. That's what we're looking at right now. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, raised its monetary policy rate, MPR, to 27.25%, as announced during the Monetary Policy Committee MPC meeting, chaired by Governor Yemi Kadoso. That is the governor of the CBN. The decision aims to boost confidence and tackle inflationary pressure, with the core inflation remaining high due to rising energy prices. The MPC expressed concerns about excess liquidity, foreign exchange demand and fiscal deficit, but acknowledged the government's commitment not to use monetary financing. The CBN praised efforts to stabilize food prices and noted that lifting refined products from the Dangote refinery is expected to lower transportation costs and reduce foreign exchange pressure. Our guest this morning is uh, Mr. Mukhtar Mohammed, a financial expert. Good morning and welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Very good. Okay. Um, I, I hope you have bought your Ashwebi for 1st of October right? because uh, I, we understand that the, the federal government, through the wife of the president, uh, has produced Ashwebi. That's what I call it uh, for our Independence Day celebration. That will be a fabric for unity for our country. I mean, it's news to me. You just tell me, maybe I will need to apply for it. <laughs> okay, please look for it to unite everybody uh, in your community. Well, now the MPC, uh, against uh, financial experts' um, advice, has raised the um, the interest rate yet again. Now it is 27.25%, and they gave some reasons that uh, it will strengthen the economy and whatever, whatever, a lot of things that I do not understand uh, because I'm not a financial expert, but you are. Uh, tell us how true their statements and the reasons they gave for raising interest yet again are. How strong are they? How good are they? Uh, thank you again. Uh, I think... For, for, for most of us, we were surprised, we expected that um, if you don't cut the rate, maybe you just leave it at where it was. But, um, but uh, um, they have more data than us. I can say that maybe they have more information than what we had. Uh, I think the problem also had to do with um, physical policies that are not um, synergizing with what the monetary policy are doing. And one of those physical policies is, uh, like you said, you report high energy costs is also impacting on, on businesses. So, and um, again, there is a lot of liquidity in the system, um, also due, due to intervention by the federal government in terms of um, direct cash settlement and also debt repayment. So all these um, are what the, the MPC said they looked at. And again, um, we don't think we've seen the last of um, the uh, for price increment because, uh, again, we believe that um, that's the if you listen to the interview by Aligo Dangote yesterday, he's still saying like a government is still being subsidized, those so subsidies should be removed completely. So but those are part of the things I think they are looking at and then also you know, the place of insecurity the flooding that has happened in some of these um, farming settlements that are the almost like the food basket of Nigeria. And then the inability of government also and the and, and, and the government the physical side to come up with um, um, the tariff um, the, um, um, the tariff, um, um, I mean, the mobile tariff for household items that have not been affected uh, over two months now because um, the Ministry of Finance or the, the, the Customs say they are still waiting for the Ministry of Finance to send them the, the list of some of these goods that will be exempted from duty. So, all these are policies that um, were, were definitely the, the MPC would have looked. And also the pressure on the still there is still there uh, at that today in the rest of have gone to about 1,667. So that 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 volatility is still there. Um, so you 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 still have those challenges there. And like I always say, Nigeria inflation approaches is largely driven by exchange volatility. But like you said also in your introduction, hopefully if the data are right, I keep saying the data are right. Uh, because um, if you say that um, 40% of the pressure on the exchange rate is being driven by importation of refined petroleum product, um, we might see an end to that by October. Mm -hmm. I thought on um, the October 1st, I should be able to celebrate the, 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 the Naira to, Naira to um, 
stock sell that uh, that also we will finally stop Nigeria from importing any refined petroleum products. That's what I thought there should be should be for so that we should jubilate that because we will bring down about forty percent of our FX um, um, pressure. Like I said, if the data are right, because why uh, most uh, uh, financial expert economists thought that um, the CDM was going to cut rate was because of the data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. So what it means is that um, sometimes these data are not really what reality on ground. So um, it, 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 for me, it's a pointer to that um, what the Bureau are giving to the CDM. The CDM does not have so much confidence in it. It just a hiking rate at this time. So for a layman, is this uh, raising of the interest rate good for us or bad for us? The experts are on one side, the CBN is doing what they want to do. Who are the people that you think are, are really uh, in touch with what the reality is? Is it the CBN or other experts that are on the field? I think um, most experts are in touch with the reality. And I think the CBN is also getting to, to, to face reality before now. Um, they think uh, the president should be was thinking that just hiking rate will bring down the cost of inflation. But I think they have admitted that um, FX volatility is also what is fueling inflation. And uh, they are, they, the CBN said they will continue to intervene. Uh, they, they, they said we we'll put in uh, the reserve up to 22 months old, 22 months high. Um, even if that is not impacting on the exchange rate yet, we have seen the convergence of the exchange rate with the parallel and the. Uh, and the, uh, and the official market at 1,600, which for me still shows that the Naira is in that value. And, uh, and I think that the CBN should be working towards uh, making the Naira have its value. That's what they should be talking about uh, um, 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 now. Yes, who will suffer? I think, um, <laughs> I think the, the average Nigeria is going to really feel the pain of this, um, and small businesses also are going to suffer. And I mean, the, the, the mean that in the way that the CBN can borrow more, and the bank can borrow from the CBN is 27.25%. I mean, when you borrow at 27.25%, you will be going, you will be lending at, um, at um, 30%, some of them will be lending at 25%, some of them will be lending at 30%. And that also played pretty well the non performing loans, which are, if you look at some of the bank's balance sheet, half year balance sheet. You see those imperial charges as a regard of non performing loan going high. And this is likely driven by this um, statement. And we'll get to the common man that the cost of goods has gone up uh, because, again, the, 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 the producer will only pass the bulk of it to the consumer. Um, um, small business are going to still continue to, to struggle in the short term. I think um, um, that is the immediate um, effect that we are going to see from this um, rate hike. Yeah, the CBN could say that they are doing it because um, the, 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 the um, Americans have cut up their rate and have done it with fixed income space. Uh, they have to hide the rate in Nigeria for the fixed income space to be attractive for foreign portfolio investors to come with their efforts. And that will help short the, the, the reserve and that also will help bring down the exchange rate. Uh, but I keep saying uh, nobody will want to bring this uh, come to your economy or come to your market where your exchange rate is still very volatile. We are having between 1,600, but it's not stable. So hey, you know, that's like the kind of um, investors that you think you are, you are going to attract. So I still have uh, my doubt about attracting foreign investors because we've been doing it for a while now. How much of these foreign investors has really, really attracted and how much they have been bringing them? The exchange rate. Anytime the exchange rate has come down, it has to be the intervention of the Central Bank of Nigeria through release of FX to be really change. Uh, it has not been because of the inflow that has come in from uh, from uh, from investors or from Nigeria from that. So uh, I have my 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 doubt about that working. If this if if you look at what the CBA think they are doing to attract more foreign investors because the high yield they will get in the fixed income space. So uh, that means that they're, they're thinking about the foreign investors and they are forgetting about the local investors and the local businesses because if it's going to affect the local businesses and we've heard, we the lay people, we hear that it's the small businesses that really make the economy to be as strong as it should be. But now they are dying. So why are they keeping on? Okay, maybe uh, Nigeria's external reserve reaches um, new heights of $39.07 billion. Maybe it is, it is showing in, the, uh, in our external reserve. But how will that help us as a country? Um, 
I, just, I told you that um, um, what is driving our um, inflation pressure is not um, the cutting of the rate. Or, yeah, the cutting of the rate is more, more having the rising interest rate is more or less to give the fixing cost space some breather that will attract more portfolio investors. Um, and then the, the, the CBN have really come to understand that what is driving inflation is the exchange rate. So, why well, they don't want to attract investors into the markets so where we can have more liquidity in the Nigerian uh, FX? And when that liquidity comes, that means again it will bring down uh, the, the exchange rate between the naira and the dollar, and that will have the positive effect because uh, over 70 to 80 percent of what we consume we import. And not only that, because even in those that we don't import the machineries for this production, we import it. So, what that will do is that it will bring down the rate, and uh, once the rate is still with constant, then you are tackling an inflation pressure. So, they see they have uh, now for me, I think they now know what the challenge is. The challenge is not um, 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 in the terms of um, the hiking rates that they have been doing, but again, they have to do this hiking rate now so that they can attract um, foreign um, investors. Yes, it affects local business in the short term. That's what I keep saying. And for the short term, you are going to see local business struggling. But when those rates have stabilized, and then you, do, you see that uh, the CDN will be able to have enough liquidity, and then they still will come down because most of these local businesses also, you shouldn't forget that they also depend on the importation of some of their products, machineries, and others. So that will also help bring down the cost of production. Uh, rising energy costs will come down. However, what whether transportation will come down like what the CBN is saying in this report. I, 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 I don't think so yet unless the CMG buses that we have been expecting forever have decided when the, when the government decide to put them more on the road, then we could see that um, 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 that um, downside in terms of um, transportation. Um, again the game changer still remain down to the refinery, like I said, um, if they are able to to um, to have uh, them stop uh, refining, but some refined petroleum product, 40 percent FX demands goes down. That is very huge, and um, that also will reduce the pressure on 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 the demand. But uh, like I said, it all depends on whether what this 40 percent is uh, what we've been talking about. And the government said that once it stops the importation of refined petroleum product, it's going to save about 20 billion dollars a year. And what that will do to us, uh, we just speak the result about 30. 89 billion dollars. So in a year from now, let's say we start stopping importation by October, uh, if the data is uh, right and the government is saving 20 billion, then our reserve should be should be hitting about um, uh, about 50 uh, about 60 billion dollars by this time next year. That would be huge. That would really drive down. But like I said, it all depends even if what they are saying is really true and uh, if government is still subsidizing uh, um, PMS. But from what we gathered, um, what they bought from Danguti, what they sell to the marketers, they see a lot of um, issues tied to that. It's, it's not looking like um, the, the, the more you see, the less you understand because it's making us look like importation is cheaper than even buying from Danguti in finance. So, but um, we need to, to see how we can attract more effects into the economy. We don't need to look at, um, um, look at domestic uh, dollar bond. So hard, I was, was subscribed over 900 over 900 percent. That tells you how much we have to our economy, and uh, so um, we hope hopefully they will come up with other products that will attract long term investment, especially in Nigeria. The diaspora, all these are geared towards improving the effects liquidity because the challenge of inflation in Nigeria, I still say it, prevent the volatility of the exchange rate. Yeah, but you, you did mention that um, the small businesses may struggle for a, a time, and I was just I was just thinking in my heart: Are there parameters that I'm giving you that confidence that they are going to struggle for a time, like for a while they are going to struggle and they will bounce back? Because it doesn't seem as if there's a, a road map. It doesn't seem as if there are any gains whatsoever uh, from these policies that are being uh, being brought to us. What, what is it that is giving you that confidence that after a while, but businesses will bounce back? Yeah, my confidence is still burden on if we decide, if, if it works like that we may have this exchange stability. And um, that means the, the, the exchange comes out of the exchange between the and the dollar comes to its really true value than what we are saying now. And then that means that um, the cost of doing business will go down. We can say most of the things, even in SMEs, most of them are struggling to meet demand because most of the, uh, their products are being imported into this country. So 
definitely that me high cost in terms of bringing in. Uh, also, uh, uh, well, I, I, I am looking at the government finally implement its uh, tariff uh, uh, reduction or elimination of tariff for household uh, food item because the key driver of the inflation of pressure these days has become a food food inflation. And so, uh, hopefully, that we do. Um, transportation costs coming down like the CDN said, but I'm, I'm not so confident about that. But we expect that the federal government will finally roll out those uh, CNG buses and not just the buses, but trucks to move um, and milk and product from the rural area to the urban area. Um, insecurity will be drastically addressed. You are, you are seeing um, the Nigerian army are having a lot of victory in the fight against boundary crime and surging, especially in, in, in states that in the, in the, in the, in the north, east, and north central. But the challenge is that the current uh, flood disaster that happened in in, in, in medical Gulu State also um, is not happy matter. So when I look at all this, but I basically why I'm confident that um, it could be a game changer is if really, 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 and like I said, those figures that were given to us by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics is really true that um, uh, I mean, uh, by the CBN that um, 40 percent of the of the FX purchase largely driven by with importation of refined petroleum products. So basically, the root cause of Nigerian inflation of pressure is just the exchange rate. I keep saying because um, we, we definitely import virtually everything that we need in this country. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad that you're using the word if because <laughs> it may really not happen because everything we've been promised, uh, okay, let me say almost everything, let me just uh, uh, play the devil's advocate here, has not worked. CNG buses, you have mentioned, they are taking forever. They have not come. And even if they come, how many of these stations do we have that have CNG that can, can fuel these, uh, these cars or buses or, or all that? We don't have them. So if I'm traveling from here to Kaduna State, how many filling stations, gas stations do we have that have CNG from uh, on that route that is going to Kaduna State. So I'll have to fill my tank while I'm still within Lagos and uh, Ogun State. And after that, I don't see it anymore. The 100 buses, the, the insulting 100 buses that were promised by uh, the, the federal government in COP28 or so have not reached us. And we don't know when it will come. The food tariff that was supposed to be removed for 150 days, which is uh, just like five months, we, it has not started. They are saying that there are some problems here and there, so they have not started. The 40,000 naira bag of rice, <laughs> we've not seen it at all. The free rice that they were talking about from, from customs, we didn't see that. The ones that they said they were going to open the silos for us to, to, to get rice, we didn't see that. I, I don't know of promises that have been kept by this administration. So I don't know how you are getting that confidence, but I thank you for having that confidence with us. But that is where I stand because I can't see anything that has been promised that has worked. I don't know which ones you know that have worked. Well, uh, you, you know, um, the custom, um, I mean, the bureaucracy between the custom and the finance, Minister of Finance is very insulting to Nigeria and of also, I expect the office of the president to be raising the high amount some of these um, uh, um, um, officials because the presidency directive is taking it forever to to implement. Uh, I mean, that shows that there um, is no synergy in this administration. Uh, I mean, I expect that before the president should have made this pronouncement, he would have spoken to his team, they would have given him the wood more, they would have told him which and which product will enjoy, how it will affect the economy. And I, I think that has not been done up to this moment. Like you say, we are still waiting. Um, so for me, that, again, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't portray them as an administration that have synergy in terms of policies. Um, the, the one you talk about, um, uh, the cell was being open. Remember that that was open by custom some time ago, but along the line it was shut down because of the of, uh, involving some dead incident. Uh, a lot of Nigerians were almost overwhelmed because of the, of the bag of rice. Uh, so, definitely, when you look at what is from, but one thing about economy is that um, some policy do not begin, you don't begin to see. The result of some policies, it takes some time before you see those results. But my challenge has always been the, is the speed in which the government tend to announce and the slow motion which they tend to implement. And that has been one of the um, problem with this administration. So I think um, they need to work on 
um, making a pronouncement and immediately following that pronouncement with action, actionable plan as to what they have agreed. So it just seems like uh, somebody just come make a pronouncement and and then wait wait for what 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 they will make it plan. What what next? So I, I think that is basically the challenge. It's not that some of these policies are not are not good. They are good policies too. Since here, if you look at economically, they are good policies. But again, implementation of any good policy depends on the structure that is in place. And when you look at the Nigerian economy, it's not structural uh, reform. I mean, in this structural reform is still lacking in that space. So I think there's still a lot of work to be done. But um, I believe strongly that. Uh, they should be able to pull this through, um, especially with what the CBN is trying to do. But if the CBN is doing all it can and the physical side is just comatose, like what we have seen in terms of policy, so much so, so slay and mutual implementation of policy, then uh, we'll, we'll be back here next year again. It's the same the same thing again. The next year to find again next, next week. We'll be back to saying the same thing. But I think the, the, the stake is high now. Uh, the various uh, government officials are beginning to realize that there is hunger in the land. Uh, I read from the Nigerian you know, Supreme Review where you're saying that the, the Senate president that abused himself mm -hmm. and that, that there's no hunger in the land is finally admitting that there's hunger in the land. The president has continued to say, Yeah, we know that there is the people are suffering, we are doing our best. So, first of all, to, to get a solution to the problem is to admit that there is a problem. We there are now, so now it's the common action group plan on how to solve this problem. That's why I'm confident. Okay, so what will this actionable plan be if you were to advise? Because uh, it seems to be slow. You, you said everything hangs on the exchange rate and uh, right now there was a time when it came down to was it 1,200 and everybody was clapping that this government is doing something, it's really working and all that. Now it's nearing 2,000 uh, naira to a dollar and we don't seem to be even crying as much as we used to cry those days. It's, it's like Nigerians as usual are adjusting to that reality. What can they do? What do you think can be done to fast track whatever needs to be done to make sure that the exchange rate is not as bad as it is right now? Because I think it's very bad. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with you in terms of exchange rate. Like I've said, that on the true value of the naira. Um, for the first time, the International Organization of World Bank, IMF, Africa Development Bank, has seen that the, the naira is undervalued, which is good for us. But now that should attract more investment because that means investors want to come when your currency is undervalued and so they make more profit when, when they are going to require that time, the price would, would have been stabilized. Now, well, how can we really stabilize this to attract more efforts into our economy, like I've said? And that's why I think the CBN is hiking rates so that they can attract portfolio investors that will have high yield, especially in the fixed income space. But how that will plan out, I'm still waiting because of this, like I said, the volatility again. So not every uh, portfolio investor wants to take risks and believe that your naira is adequately priced. And when we are here for the 90 days or for the uh, 60 days or for the 61 days or for the 366 days, we are definitely going to see those um, upside come too because uh, again a lot of them always think that there's policy um, so much of when it comes to Nigeria. Especially what you just said at the point of 1,200, we said okay, finally we get to 1,000 1, uh, before the end of this year and then we take it from there. Unfortunately, it um, does not um, um, mean that. And when you look at what drove them to that point, you see that it was severe intervention in terms of giving them a way to be the change to give the end users. I keep saying that the challenge with the exchange and volatility is not the large demand that is being met in the import, export, or willing buyer, willing seller, FX market. No, that's not, that's not the, um, I mean, that's not the major challenge. The major challenge is this literally to exchange that for some of these SMEs people use, people want to pay school fees, people want to travel. That's really the volatile, and that retail angle has not been uh, addressed in terms of liquidity and that's why we are seeing this volatility so if i'm the CBO, we try to see how we can address this retail uh, side of uh, of the fx market uh, and then create liquidity in that space and maintain some liquidity in the in the autonomous fx market that will drive down uh, really that's what i think they should be doing okay if i if i uh, and, uh, and wait now to still uh, bring in foreign investors 
if we that will work for those that are ready to take risks. And then again, you talked about the um, tariff uh, policy. I hope they should hasten it so that um, we begin to have um, food coming to this country that are cheaper than what we are is obtainable now. I mean, for me, if they do these two things, uh, it will definitely drive down uh, inflation and then put more money in the hands of the average Niger. But again, the game changer still remains that if anything, if yes, anything to go by, then if that will tell you finally fully, fully, and then NPC and then NPC and that will, will not be going back and forth. And then also, that is one area that uh, could just be a game changer and then see Nigerian economy come back on stream. Not to forget that um, a Dangote will not just only be uh, bringing um, any uh, having crude for Naira, but also be ex exporting some of this crude and bringing efforts into the Nigerian uh, market. And that also could help. And NNPC also will be a player. They plan that they will be a player. And they are looking at their, their, their refinery for tackle, even if it's taking forever to come on straight. One day it will come on straight, and that will be a couple Competitor, other private refinery are being built all over the country. So um, I, I still believe that in, uh, it's just a matter of time before uh, we get it in the energy side. Once we get it in that energy space and we see the pressure of the Naira and the only pressure we are dealing with it will be pressure of um, um, traveling, school fees, and uh, other retail uh, uh, end of, um, um, of the market, then you will see that the price will stabilize, it will come down, then you will become a destination for foreign, both foreign and direct uh, uh, investors. Well, I, I, just feel, I just feel that uh, in our craze to look for uh, FDI, we are leaving uh, the local investors and investments and uh, are just chasing shadows. I wish that this one year that we were, we've been going all over the globe to look for foreign investors, we had made the situation so uh, good for the local investors to flourish uh, before we begin to look for foreign investors. But what do I know? I'm not an economist. I'm not a financial expert. But I think that should, would have helped us a lot uh, because if I've our local businesses, businesses had flourished. Every other thing could have been added on to us. But we are leaving these ones to die, and then we are looking for foreign investors to come out. Um, well, that's what I, just, just what I think. Uh, char our charity is not beginning at home. It's beginning somewhere else. And because of that, we are neglecting the important things which are in our houses. Yeah, because, like, like I said, because we have um, we import virtually everything we need, even the small companies that you are talking about. So you need to sort of stabilize our pain. And the board, I totally agree with you that we have paid beef service to stabilizing the exchange rate with bringing more liquidity into the system. Uh, before now, we are saying, oh, there's too much liquidity. You are trying to cut trade. You are reducing the numbers of, uh, you are reducing uh, liquidity in the system. And you go to ATM machines, you are not able to withdraw money. That's a part of the measure that the CBM were using. Now they are saying, they will mention that funds are available and they will sanction banks. Uh, like you said, the key driver of the Nigerian economy is that informal sector. That informal sector is largely driven by liquidity. So when you try to cut rates, uh, I mean, um, start the, the, the economy of the Liquidity are key in a very vibrant sector of the Nigeria economy. And when you bring a policy like this, that begins to tell uh, uh, um, banks that they can actually learn um, money to bring keep money with the CBN and uh, interest on it rather than lend it to a risky sector. That's what most of the banks will just try the, the Fuga Bank because they have this liquidity and then you see their profit comes up or high, then but you see they are low to the economy very slow, they are very little, then you, you also see uh, the, 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 the non-performing one very high. So those are things that the CBN need to look at. But like I said, um, for now, they are, they are just in between the devil and the deep blue sea, and so they are in between dealing with inflation or growing the economy. But if you grow the economy and inflation is still a problem, then you, you will not see the, 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 you will not see the result. So I think what they are trying to do, they are trying to deal with that monster called inflation. Once they deal with this monster called inflation, then they will be able to begin to look at how to grow the economy, uh, either through interventions or some of these SME business that are that are, uh, that are very very um, critical to the development of Nigerian economy, especially in the service sector, and also begin to look at um, other sectors of the Nigerian economy, how they can intervene to bring down the cost in terms of production, especially in the manufacturing space. I uh, wouldn't be able to address rising energy costs, but that cannot be done uh, because of the 
2016. We remember again the discourse the telling us that the reason why the price of uh, uh, electricity is high is because of this thing. So you look at it, all our lives is just tied around the volatility of this thing. So for now, I think the CBN is getting it right to say, look, we want to see how we can stabilize this rate so that uh, we can drive down inflation. I, I think they are trying to address the real cost compared to what they have been doing before now, just uh, cutting it and then hiking it and reducing the liquidity in the system. Okay, well, mm. let's hope for a better Nigeria. Let's hope that all these policies begin to pay off because uh, before we 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 buy, as Nigerians would say. We'd like to thank you, Mokta, for coming on the show this morning and helping us make sense of what is going on. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. We've been talking to Mokta Mohammed, the financial expert, on the show. We, we were looking at the fact that the CBN has raised interest again, and now it is 27.25%. And how will that help us? How is that helping us? Uh, well, uh, let's see how the coming days will be. We hope that we'll get out of what we are feeling right now and then on to the glorious days. Uh, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at the problems of the NDDC. Though there's litigation right now, talking, of calling for the sack of the chairman of NDDC because he was wrongfully appointed, according to uh, the, um, the people of the Niger Delta. The court sets, uh, is set to deliver judgment on alleged illegal appointment on a later date. Stay with us.